Three, two, one. Welcome to Antimatters. Hello everyone. A care guide today on the Tetramorin by Karen Atom for a special 10th episode. The Tetras have been one of the best ant keeping journeys I've had so far in all of ant keeping, if not the best. They're an amazing species. About three or four millimetres long, six millimetres for the queens, dark mahogany red bodies with black gasters. They're just gorgeous. They've successfully spread around the globe with some human help. In my opinion, they are the perfect ant and no collection is complete without them. They're very unique. Some of their pros include, they're not aggressive, to humans anyway. They don't run off very far if they get out. They don't sting. The colony size can grow indefinitely under the right circumstances. They don't hibernate. And they're immortal. Clickbait. <coughs> but they are technically like the colony itself is immortal. The cons. They are partial to the odd bit of regicide, which is a little bit distressing to watch. And... They're not polymorphic, but they will produce the odd runt. And these little runts can get out of the tiniest little gaps. So you've got to be careful with those. Although, as I mentioned in the pros, they don't run off very far. We'll cover these though, more as um, we progress through the video. So, conditions. They don't mind light at all, and in my experience, they don't even need a red film. They'll happily sit there under a bright light bulb for as long as you want. For temperature, I usually aim between 22 and 27. This works really well and unlocks their really rapid growth. Anything lower or higher seems to inhibit the growth and they'll go kind of quite slowly. During rapid growth, the egg to worker time is only a month and they can really just grow. It's exponential every month, they'll double in size and it's amazing. They don't really have a specific humidity as the workers and brood require completely different conditions. The workers like it dry and unhydrated. The brood, however, like a really high humidity. To deal with this, a gradient really helps. You want to aim at a gradient with a small amount of high humidity and a lot of dry space. I use Wakushi modules personally as the gypsum chambers facilitate the gradient so well. That said though, they're very hardy and will accept any type of nest and you don't really have to trouble yourself too much on getting it perfect because they're not super fussy. When choosing a nest though, take into account that they can be messy. You can easily make them clean by dampening. They don't hibernate. Directly hydrating it with a pipette or the likes or blotting it with a piece of wet cotton wool. Once it's wet, they'll clear it out in no time. For barriers, PTFE and baby powder and alcohol seem to work really well at containing them. Also something to note, their outworld can be anything from about 18 Celsius to 30 Celsius. They come from the tropics originally, so can deal with quite high and low temperatures. They're not really super fussy at all though, as I said. They should call them the not fussy ants. On to diet. They're super easy to feed. They will accept pretty much all forms of sugar and protein. They love sugar water and cockroaches for sure though. I haven't found anything they won't eat except marmalade. And I fed them half the pantry. <laughs> I'll leave the food area brief so you can experiment yourself to find out what's right. As they're not really fussy, it really comes down to what you can access and get hold of easiest. A little variety every so often helps any ant too. 
They guzzle water as well, so make sure they always have access to sun. With these details, you could easily start a thriving colony. They're so easy to keep once you have their setup down. As I mentioned, they do like heat, so it really doesn't hurt to invest in a heat cable or a heat mat and a thermostat. It's 100% worth it. So what makes them so amazing? Well, in the pros, I mentioned they are pretty much immortal colonies. Yes, workers and queens will come and go, but like an amphibian grows back their legs, the colony replaces losses through inbreeding. That means there's always queens to inherit the colony's throne. I'm quite looking forward to my colony over the next decades. And well, I just can't wait to see how they come along over such a long time span. They also have very high curiosity, so they're always out exploring, but are generally passive and non-aggressive. They're excellent relaxation when you're watching them. I often lose myself watching them and forget even time. If you're conscious of where your ants come from, which honestly, we all should be, these species are the pinnacle of responsible source as well. Essentially, you can produce an endless supply of colonies from another colony with zero wild ants required, which is great if you ask me. Also something to note is they don't really have a nuptial flight time. They'll fly whenever the conditions are okay. Most stay in the nest and never leave, but they will need a lid if they are not native in your area. With so much choice of queens, they are very partial to regicide, which is a bit distressing to see. You can try to save them, but I've had no success keeping the rejected queens alive so far. In the extremely rare case, and I don't recommend it either, that you get a queen with no workers, they are semi-claustral. I say not recommended because these queens really struggle to found alone and will nearly always fail. You're definitely best to get queens and workers. I recommend two plus queens for better inbreeding. I think even one queen can create more queens though. I really hope you enjoyed this video though and found it helpful. They're 100% a five star species ant and I can't imagine not keeping them now. Bonus, you can give your friends colonies as well by adding a test tube to a mature colony and siphoning off a queen or two, which is just amazing, I think. Especially if you want to get your mates into ant keeping. If you're wondering where to get some really good queens, I recommend the ant lady. That's where I got mine from and they've grown so well and all of the ants are always top notch. You can't really go wrong. If you've got Tetramorin by Karen Atten, let me know how your journey is coming along. And if you have these ants at any stage of growth, I'd love to hear. If you've got anything to add as well to the care guide, just drop it in the comments below and I'll pin it. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.